Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the B3 enclosure that Atom Stack developed for their A24 Pro laser engraver. It's made with thick laser shielding acrylic panels and aluminum to make it strong and provide a good view inside while the machine is working without needing laser shielded safety glasses. It's also equipped with a fan and flex hose for exhausting fumes outside of your workspace, as well as a fisheye USB camera that you can connect to laser engraving software like Lightburn and use it for accurately positioning your work, tracing images, and you can use it for creating time-lapse videos too. If you follow the channel, then you probably know that I've already reviewed the A24. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to put the enclosure together, how to calibrate the camera in Lightburn to get a flat, undistorted overlay of the camera's view on your canvas, and what you can do with it after it's set up. Of course, the enclosure can be purchased with the engraver, in which case the wiring for the enclosure lights and switches will be pre-installed in the machine. In my case, I acquired the enclosure after the engraver, so I need to install the wiring myself, but it only takes a minute to do, and Atomstack provides clear instructions for how to connect them. After the wiring was installed, I fastened the side panels to the top of the engraver's unibody frame with the provided screws, then connected the lights and switches. Next, I fastened the back panel to the side panels and connected the flex hose with a hose clamp. Then I fasten the top and front panels which function together as a door. To help keep a good seal, a rubber grommet is provided to plug the hole for the camera cable. The fan connects to a splitter that also connects to the engraver and power adapter, and the switch controls power to both the engraver and the fan so they turn on simultaneously. Finally, I reconnected the air assist pump, set the honeycomb work platform that came with the engraver, and reinstalled the 20 watt diode laser module. Everything powered up with no problems, so I connected the machine to my PC, opened Lightburn, then clicked the Windows tab in the main menu to turn on the camera control which appears in the panel on the right side of the page. Then I selected the USB camera from the camera options to make sure the camera was on and working. Atomstack provided the circle pattern that's needed for calibrating the camera in Lightburn, but you can also download and print the pattern through Lightburn if you need to. This card is placed at different locations in the work area so Lightburn can take measurements and make adjustments to the overlay accordingly so that it's not distorted by the fish eye lens. The instructions in the calibration wizard show how and where to place the card relative to the camera, and once it's set, you need to click the capture button and Lightburn will show a score that tells you how successful it was at seeing the card. A score below 0.3 is ideal, but as long as it's below 1, then you should get a reasonable result when you're finished. When you do get a score below 1, then click the next button and reposition the card as instructed for the next capture. If your score is higher than 1, then you'll need to adjust the position of the card to get a better score and recapture the image. For the best result, make sure the card is facing exactly parallel with the camera. If it's tilted or curved in any way, then that will affect accuracy, if not make it impossible for Lightburn to recognize it. This process is very finicky, and it took me a few tries. Ultimately, my scores ranged from 0.5 to 0.9, but that was enough to produce an overlay that's more than accurate enough for my needs, as you'll see in a few minutes. Once the lens calibration is finished, a lens alignment is required. This wizard can be found under the Windows tab next to the lens calibration. To start, I placed a large scrap piece of plywood in the work area and set the laser focus with the provided multi-level focus block. Then I opened the alignment wizard, selected the camera, and followed the instructions to set the laser power, speed, and scale for marking the targets shown in the wizard onto the plywood. These will help determine accuracy of the canvas overlay in all corners of the work area, so the larger the test material is and the further these targets are engraved away from the camera, the better. Once the parameters were set, I clicked the frame button to frame the area and make sure that the scale that I chose was going to fit on the plywood. Then I pressed the start button to mark them.
When it was finished, I clicked next and used the controls to toggle the laser out of the camera's view, then clicked capture to take a picture of the targets. If the resulting image is distorted or has missing portions, then the lens calibration needs to be done more accurately before the alignment can be finished. In my case, the image looks good, so I proceeded to the next step. Here you have to zoom in and double click the exact center of each mark. This needs to be done in sequence and as precisely as possible, starting with one and ending with four. Once that's done, the alignment is finished and you can click the update overlay button in the camera control window to overlay the camera's view onto your canvas. If everything worked as it should, then you can use the toggle tool to click anywhere you want in the work area to move the laser head to that position and verify its accuracy. If there's a discrepancy of more than a millimeter, then I recommend repeating the lens calibration and alignment procedures. Now that the camera's set up, I'm going to use it to trace an image and engrave it onto another scrap piece of plywood. I chose Atomstack's logo from one of their instruction manuals for the demonstration. Because the logo is small and we only have a digital zoom available, I prop the manual close to the camera on a couple of spools of 3D printer filament to get the best result. With the logo positioned, I click the trace tool in camera control. Lightburn then traces an outline around every object that it sees through the camera. All I want for this demonstration is the logo, so I hid the camera overlay, then ungrouped the trace, selected everything, and used the control button on my keyboard to deselect the logo before deleting everything else. Next, I placed some material in the machine and updated the canvas overlay. Then I positioned the logo where I wanted it on the material, and then imported my own channel logo to engrave as well. I can engrave it as an image, or I can right-click on it to select the same trace tool that I used for the Atomstack logo. Once it was scaled and positioned, I set the process mode for both logos to fill, set the power to 70%, the speed to 12,000 millimeters per minute, the line interval to 0.08, and I used a bidirectional fill with 2% overscanning. With everything set, I then framed the work area and started engraving. I really like how you get a complete view of everything that's happening when the machine is working. Most other enclosures only provide a small viewing window in the front or top. When the machine was finished, I updated the overlay to verify that the engraving is positioned accurately with the trace image on the canvas, which it is. The logos turned out nice too. A few edges on the Atomstack logo are a little jagged because I didn't capture enough detail where I had it placed for the trace, but it was a small image to start with that I scaled up and didn't spend any time adjusting the lighting, so this is a reasonable result for the effort that I put into it. But that's going to be it for this video, folks. It's not a complicated piece of equipment, but it does exactly what it's designed to do, and I think it looks pretty good too. If you're interested in getting one of these for your A24 Pro, then check out the link in the description. If you're interested in learning more about the A24 Pro, then check out the link for my review in the description as well. Thanks for watching, and take care, folks.